Morgan Housel is a partner at the Collaborative Fund. His book, The Psychology of Money, has sold over 2 million copies and has been translated into 52 languages. In The Psychology of Money, Morgan Housel teaches you how to have a better relationship with money and to make smarter financial decisions. Instead of pretending that humans are ROI optimizing machines, he shows you how your psychology can work for and against you. In this video, we are going to present you with five lessons from the book, Psychology of Money, that will reflect your approach to money in a logical way. Number one, no one is crazy. Your personal experiences with money make up maybe 20% of what's happened in the world, but maybe 80% of how you think the world works. Every decision people make with money is justified by taking the information they have at the moment and plugging it into their unique mental model of how the world works. People do strange things with money, but no one is insane. People from different generations, raised by different parents with different incomes and values, in different parts of the world, born into different economies, experiencing different job markets with different incentives and degrees of luck, learn very different lessons. Their perspectives on money were formed in different worlds. And when that's the case, a monetary viewpoint that one group of people finds absurd can make perfect sense to another. Number two, luck and risk. Luck and risk are both manifestations of the fact that every outcome in life is influenced by forces other than individual effort. They are so close that you can't believe in one without also believing in the other. They both occur because the world is too complicated for 100% of your actions to determine 100% of your outcomes. You are a single player in a game with 7 billion other players and an infinite number of moving parts. The unintended consequences of actions beyond your control can be far more serious than those you take consciously. As a result, concentrate on broad patterns rather than specific individuals and case studies. You should experience the risk because it will pay off in the long run. However, you should be fearful of ruinous risk because it prevents you from taking future risks that will pay off in the long run. Number 3. Never Enough Life isn't any fun without a sense of enough. Happiness, as it's said, is just results minus expectations. Getting the goalpost to stop moving is the most difficult financial skill, but it is one of the most significant. If your expectations rise in combination with your results, there's no point in striving for more because you'll feel the same after putting in more effort. It becomes dangerous when the desire for more, more money, more power, and more prestige outpaces satisfaction. The issue here is one of social comparison. The point is that the social comparison ceiling is so high that almost no one will ever reach it. That means it is a battle that can never be won, or that the only way to win is to not fight in the first place, and to accept that you may have enough, even if it is less than those around you. Number 4. Freedom. The ability to do what you want when you want, with whom you want, for as long as you want, is priceless. It is the highest dividend money pays. The power to wake up every morning and say, I can do whatever I want today, is the ultimate form of wealth. People want to get richer in order to be happier, because everyone is different. Happiness is a complicated subject, but if there's a common denominator in happiness, a universal source of joy, than its people's desire to have control over their lives. The capacity to govern your time is money's greatest inherent worth, which cannot be understated. Gradually achieve a degree of autonomy and independence derived from unutilized resources that give you more control over what you can accomplish and when you can do it. Number 5. Getting Wealthy versus Staying Wealthy There are a million ways to get wealthy, but there's only one way to stay wealthy. It is some combination of frugality and paranoia. Making good decisions is not always necessary for good investing. It's all about not making mistakes all the time. The ability to persist for an extended period of time without wiping out or being forced to give up is what makes the most difference. This should be the foundation of your strategy, whether it's for investing, your career, 
or your own business. There are two reasons why a survival mentality is so important when it comes to money. One is the obvious. Few gains are so significant that they are worth losing your life for. The other is the seemingly illogical math of compounding. Compounding works only if you can give an asset year to grow. Hope these lessons will impact your finance journey in a positive and fruitful way. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon. Always keep sharing such helpful content with those who need it. Thanks for watching.